Spring Web is one of the projects in Spring Boot umbrella. In this project, it allows us to create a web server wherein multiple devices or multiple users can send requests to our web server and the web server can handle those requests and send the appropriate response. Let's take a look at the code. To create a simple project of Spring Web, we can go to this site start.spring.io, fill in the appropriate group and artifact values and add an important dependency of web. I've also added this dependency of dev tools which allows us to develop faster. You can then generate the project and import it into your IDE. Once imported, you can open the POM XML and confirm that the project is using Spring Boot Starter as a parent and it has this dependency of Spring Boot Starter Web. And this Spring Boot Starter Web has the embedded Tomcat server and this is what makes our application a web application. It will also have this main class which does nothing but runs the Spring application. Once you run this class as a Java class, it will start your web server and in the console you will see something like this. And the important thing to note here is this line which says the Tomcat has started on this particular port. That means that of n number of applications running on our server or on our local machine, this particular application is listening to incoming requests on this particular port. Now that our application has started to accept incoming requests, we can go to a browser and we can type in localhost and that port number which is 8080 and hit enter. What will happen is it will return back the error of 404. 404 status stands for not found and basically in layman terms it was able to accept the request but it could not understand what to do with it. So let's try to remedy that. We can create a class, let's say greeting controller, which has this method called greet. All this method does is returns a string called hello there. To make this greeting controller class in a servlet, we have to add this annotation, spring annotation called rest controller. This annotation tells spring that this class will be handling some incoming requests. Above the method, we will add another annotation called request mapping where we'll specify the value as slash greeting. In our application, any URL which is hit using slash greeting will invoke this particular method. And since HTTP allows us to have get, post and other kinds of requests, we have to mention that this particular type of request is a get request. This will only allow get requests to be accepted. All the other requests will be rejected. Now, if we go to this URL in the browser, we'll say localhost 8080 slash greeting, it will reply back with hello there. So two simple steps. We told Spring using this annotation that this particular class is a servlet that it has to handle some incoming request. And we added a method and an annotation called request mapping with that particular URL that we want to handle. So when we hit this URL called slash greeting, it will match that URL, it will call that method, and the method returns a string, which Spring will pass on to the browser or to the client. Spring allows a shortcut where instead of saying request mapping value equal to greeting and method type equal to get request, we can just say get mapping. So these two mappings are the same. We can also pass in parameters to our URLs. So in this case, let's say we want to pass name of the particular user whom we want to greet. To accept this parameter in your application, within the method parameters, we'll add a string which will accept that particular value. So in this case, that string is username. And we have to tell Spring what parameter we want to fill this username with and that we can do using at the rate request param. So this says that this URL slash greeting should have a request parameter with it and the name of the parameter should be this and whatever value we send during each of the invocations on the browser. So instead of Jackie we can say John or Amy or anything else that value will be captured in this particular string. And once we have that string, we can use that string to do any of our processing. 
So in this case, all we are doing is we're returning hello there and we are adding the username to our return value. So now if we fire the same URL and we add the parameter name equal to Jackie, it will return hello there Jackie. So this is how we can personalize the responses to a particular request. If the name of your parameter is the same as the name of your variable, then you do not have to add anything in the brackets of request parameter. So in the previous example, since the name of this variable was different compared to the name of the parameter, we had to have value equal to name. But if your variable name is the same, you can skip the round brackets and value attribute and you can just say at the rate request param string and whatever the name of the parameter is. You can also have multiple parameters. Initially, you just had a parameter called name. You can now add an extra parameter called time. So in this case, we just have a comma separated variable in the method. And both of them have this annotation of at the rate request param. If we hit that URL with two parameters, and in an HTTP URL, if you have two parameters, you can you have to separate it with an ampersand. So here we are saying name equal to Jackie and time equal to morning. So Spring will inject the value Jackie in this variable and will inject the value of time, which is morning, in this variable. We are calling the URL with Jackie and morning and it will return saying that good morning, Jackie. You can also have optional parameters. So let's say you want user to not always send the time. And if the user doesn't send the time, you want to have a default greeting. So in this case, you have to explicitly mention that this parameter is not required all the time. So that's why you say required equal to false. And by default, required equal to true, that means you have to send the parameter in the URL. If the parameter time is not sent, if there is no value to it, then we are assigning some default value. So we are still saying time equal to day and we are returning a particular greeting. And now if we hit the URL as earlier, it will still work as before. But if we hit the URL with just the name, the greeting will be good day, Jackie. So Spring allows you to directly set the default value in the request parameter. So you can just say default value equal to day. And now the code will work the same as the last slide. So if the, someone sends in both the parameters, it will work as is. And if someone sends only a single parameter, then we'll use the default value. A Spring Web also allows us to extract path variables. So let's say you have a use case where you are allowed to hit a URL of this kind. Slash user, the ID of the user, and you want to get the name of that user. And what we can do in this case is, within our URL mapping, we can add a curly brackets around the variable that we want to capture. The user matches the user. We want to capture 45. So in this case, we'll add, let's say ID, any name will do, and we'll add curly brackets around it. And then this name remains same. And in the method parameters, we'll say at the rate path variable instead of request param. And in the path variable, we have to say value equal to ID. So you're saying that within the path, wherever there is an ID, surrounded by curly brackets, extract that and put it in this variable. And you'll observe that instead of string, this time we have an int. And yet Spring will be able to convert that into an int and set it into the user ID. So now if you hit the URL, it'll call this method, it'll extract the value of ID, which is 45, put it into this variable, and we can use this variable to get the username. So in this case, let's say the username is Jackie, it'll return the value as Jackie. And similarly, if you have a long URL and you want to extract multiple path variables out of it, you can do so using just a comma separation. So we saw extracting request parameters, we saw extracting path variables, we can also extract request headers that are passed. We can use an annotation called at the rate request header and we can say which request header we want to extract. In this case, we are extracting accept language. Once extracted, we are just returning that same 
and now if i hit the url there is no path variable there is no parameter but by default there is a request header called accept language that is passed and in my case that value is enus which is my default browser language which is english and similarly if you have any custom headers like secret tokens that you pass in you can extract them using this annotation of a request header of course if your application is even small sized you will not have just one url to manage you will have multiple urls and you can manage them either using a single controller or you can split them based on their functionalities in multiple controllers so in this case we have a single controller called user controller and we have two url mappings and in both the cases we are extracting the path variables the code remains similar to the last time but now we have two url mappings in a single class in a single controller now if both the urls in your class has a common prefix both this url mappings started with slash user spring boot allows you to extract or separate out that common prefix between all the urls and add it at the top so here we are adding an extra annotation called at the rate request mapping and we are adding that prefix here so now whenever the url is calculated by spring it will calculate it as this common prefix plus this url for that individual method so for each functionality you can have a base path and all the functions or urls related to that functionality you can add it in that single class so until now we just saw returning a greeting in the form of a string which is a primitive but we can also return complex objects back to the user so in this case we have a url slash toy slash elephant and in this method we have to return a toy of a particular type and in this case we are just creating a new object called new toy and we are returning that toy now even though we have not written any code to convert this toy into string spring by default is able to convert this object or this pojo into json so if you hit the url slash toy slash elephant you will get this value and this is the json representation of this pojo similarly you can also accept the json without having to map that json into a pojo which is a java object so in this case we are saying that have a post mapping so in earlier we had get mapping in this case we are using the post mapping we have this url slash toy slash add and we are saying that whatever data is there in the request body convert it into this pojo of toy so if we use this fetch api and we are passing this particular json representation of toy this json representation is converted into java object instance of toy and assigned to this variable automatically by spring so let's say we have this url slash greeting we have request param name and request param time and in both the cases we have not mentioned required equal to false it is mandatory to send these parameters we'll call the url and we'll send just one parameter if we do so the reply will be bad request and the status will be 400 and will give you the exact error message saying that the string parameter time is not present and that's why spring did not handle it so you can do the basic validations right here as part of the annotations or as part of the spring default behavior let's say you have slightly custom or a different error handling mechanism the same url slash greeting and we have two parameters of name and time but in this case instead of having a free text of time we are allowing only two values for this variable so we are allowing only evening and morning to be passed in time we can explicitly send a bad request which is the status of 400 and we can send some custom error message with it we cannot have the return type as string we have to have a special return type of response entity so we say response entity dot bad request and we can set as a custom error message 
if the time is sent appropriately then we can say response entity dot ok which is the status of 200 which is a successful response if we send the time as afternoon which is not allowed and we'll get the message the body as time should be warning on evening and if you check the dev tools to, for the exact status the status code will be 400 we can also send other type of http statuses based on our use case so let's say we have a use case where we are allowing a secret greeting to be returned only for users who know the secret if it is not abc123 then we send the status as unauthorized so in this case if i send the secret as don't know i'll get the error message as not authorized and if you check the dev tools you'll see the status as 401 which is the http status of not authorized and if you send the secret as abc123 then it will give you the status of 200 which is successful and give you the successful error message to summarize we have to have at the rate rest controller at the top of the class which tells spring that this class handles incoming requests we can map a particular method to a particular url using at the rate request mapping there are shortcuts or get mapping and post mapping for get and post kind of requests if we want optional parameters we can say required equal to false for json mapping either we can directly return the pojo it will be converted to json or we can accept the json in the body using at the rate request body we can extract any part of your path using at the rate path variable and we can use response entity to send in any custom response messages back to the user so that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one